how much does a FPV drone cost? Here is the breakdown of the total cost of building one, maintaining and repairing a FPV drone. So if you are thinking about building a first drone or want to compare price between analog and digital, or you just want to know how much money I have wasted, this is the video for you. Let's start taking my drone apart and I will tell you how much each component costs. The price are approximately how much it currently costs in USA, but your price might depend on where you live. On top of the drone we will find a 3D printed GoPro mount for the Hero 6. I admit that it doesn't look that great, being held in place with a couple of zip ties. It is supposed to be mounted around this front piece, but the lower part broke off and I don't own a 3D printer to make a new mount. But so far it gets job done. Then there's battery, held in place with a couple of straps. This is a 4S battery from Tatsu. I really like them. They are on the more expensive side, but very durable. Also, to charge all of the batteries, you need to have a special type of charger like this one. Something you need to consider before building a drone is if you will have a 4S or a 6S build. Meaning, are you going to use a more expensive, more powerful 6 cell battery or a more widespread 4 cell battery like I have here? That decision affects your choice of the electronic speed controller that we will get to once we start taking the drone apart. The straps are made from leather and are much more stronger and durable than those cheap plastic ones. I've had them before. You can be sure that your battery won't be flying off when you do a hard turn or a flip. Here is the frame. It's a Armaton Marmotte Marmot, Marmot frame. This is the second most expensive part of this whole drone. You can find frames that are really good for like half the price. What differs this one from a regular one is that it has a lifetime warranty. If you manage to break it in a crash, the folks at Armaton will send you a new part. Also, I really like the low profile of the frame and the metal housing for the camera. I've never broken the camera lens on this build, but I have on others. It's more difficult to work in this frame since it's so slim and has less space. Taking off the top plate, in the middle we will find a Mamba F405 Mark II stack. A stack means it's a combination of flight controller, FC for short, and electronic speed controller, ESC for short. Simply explained, FC is the brain of the drone that talks with every other part and tells them what to do. Meanwhile, ESC's main objective is to take power directly from battery and deliver most of that power to the motors. This is, in my opinion, the easiest way of setting up your FC and ESC as a stack. Stack means that the FC and ESC are made for each other and all the wiring between them is done for you. But you can buy each part individually and wire them together yourself. You can also buy the ESC split up into four components so that it's cheaper to replace if one motor burns down but requires more wiring. Next to the stack I have a big capacitor held in place by zip ties. It's connected to the EC where power arrives and in case something goes wrong with power distribution or I am flying full throttle and I get an ampage that is higher than what this board is designed for, the capacitor will absorb the impact. And instead of the ESC or most likely the whole stack burning down, the capacitor will explode. But replacing the cap is much more cheaper and gives you a layer of protection. So make sure to get a big nice cap. Underneath the stack is a receiver, TBS Crossfire Nano RX. I got it placed in this 3D printed housing with easy access to the connect button from the underneath and it holds it nicely in place. The antenna goes underneath to the rear and is held in place by this housing. The receiver receives the signal from this radio, the TBS Tango 2. I love this radio so much, it has crossfire, it's compact and comfortable to use. Highly recommend it. Next is the most expensive part on this drone and that is the video transmission unit VTX. It's a Cadex Vista Nebula Pro. Another thing you need to consider before starting to build your drone is that you need to decide if you are going to go digital or analog. The difference being that digital is more expensive because you need a special video transmitter VTX and one of a kind goggles. Compared with analog where there are many more options to choose from and therefore cheaper. But because DJI, the company, is the only one who has figured out how to do digital transmission, they have the monopoly on digital FPV drones and therefore no competition, meaning higher price. VTX sends image from your drone to your goggles. This VTX is a digital one and therefore sends a digital signal. All digital video transmitters have long transmission range and higher image quality than an analog transmission. 
People say that digital is more expensive than analog, but that is not true. A high-end analog system with the rapid fire as an example will cost the same as a digital one. The only difference is that you have alternatives. You can find cheap, lower quality analog video transmitter, but there is nothing for digital. Digital is all in or nothing type of scenario. The goggles that receive the digital video signal cost almost a whopping $600, but just like the radio, they are on you, not in the air. So you might crash, break or lose your drone, but not your goggles or radio, except if someone steals them. And the resale value is pretty high on those two. Back to the drone. We have 4 motors, but you can find FPV drones with 3, 6, 8 or even more. Remember I said you need to decide if you are doing a 4S or a 6S build. Well, you need to choose your motor's KV based on that. These motors are 2450 KV and are perfect for a 4S build. Then we have a set of props. You'll probably need to buy at least 2 or 3 more sets if you're going to crash or chop them up, but they are really durable. But that depends on the brand. Let's take off these propellers before we continue. I also have a beeper attached to the frame. It has its own little battery. And if I lose my drone while flying, this will make a loud noise even if the main battery is disconnected. If you look closely, you can see that all of my electronics are covered in conformal coating. It looks similar to nail polish and it creates a non-conductible layer on top of electronics, so that I don't need to worry about water or snow getting on my drone while flying and therefore causing a short and burning A component. Ah, and also there's the additional cost of tools, tape, hardware and soldering iron. That bumps the price a little bit more up. Personally, I had all the tools necessary from before and you might too. And that's about it. The total cost of the drone with goggles and controller is this much. But if you already have compatible controller and goggles, the price for the drone is only this much. And that's how much money you will lose if you lose your drone where you can't recover it like in the ocean or in the mountains. And this all might sound like a lot of money. And it is. But when I started, I had Fat Shark Recon V2 goggles. Upper Sky Tyrannis radio, drone build with medium quality parts, I also had to buy batteries, charger, tools, etc. And that was the same price, but in total the price was so much more cheaper than this. Let's make a quick comparison for a conclusion between the prices you pay for digital and analog drone. We will use a DJI Air 2S as a baseline, even though it's not a FPV drone. This is the price for one and if you break it and don't have insurance, you'll need to buy the whole package again. Then we have a digital FPV drone. Here's the average price for one drone with 4 batteries. I feel like that's the least you would want when one battery is only around 4 minutes of flight time. Then there's price for goggles and the controller. I'll use the TBS Tango 2 which I already have. If you break a drone, you only need to pay the price it costs and keep the gear the same. So you're not buying the controller or goggles over again, only the drone. And here is top of the line analog drone goggles and controller. Almost the same price. And here is a good budget friendly analog drone with goggles and a Tyrannis radio, similar to what I had when I first started. The nice thing about analog drones is that you can start with a cheap one and upgrade each part individually one by one and turn it into a top of the line drone by the end. But in the end it will cost the same amount of money as buying a digital one. In any case, the experience and learning you get from trying and failing is really worth it. What do you think about the pricing? How much money would you spend and what's your goal with FPV, if you have any? Is it to have fun or get good and do commercial work or maybe participate in a race? Thank you so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!